Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm audible from the back. Uh, I thank the organizers and also the audience. After all, it's a Sunday morning. I'll be talking about periodically driven quantum closed systems. And I'll talk about something called periodic steady state. My job is very simple because uh, this model I'm going to talk about uh, already been nicely introduced by both the earners. And this paper uh, is uh, what I want to talk about with my students, Radha and collaborators, Angelo and Giuseppe Santro, who belongs to CISA. We then followed it up with a couple of other papers. I learned plenty of things from discussions with my PhD students, Sanai and Utsho, amazingly talented MSc students, Avishkar, Titodhi, Shayak, Manisha, who works in IIC Bangalore, and of course, Diptiman. And discussions, most of the things I learned from two Arnobs, Arnob D and S, and Krishnandu, of course. Now, what is the problem we are interested in? First, I tell you something which most of you know, but uh, make uh, things entertaining. Uh, inverted pendulum reaches a periodic steady state. Can you show that video now? Excuse me, can you show that video now? Just play it. I hope it works. Quickly, huh? Please give me one minute extra. <laughs> So what was happening, a pendulum, a person was trying to stabilize it in the unstable minimum, unstable equilibrium point for the static case. He gives up and then tries driving. He applies a driving and when it is driven, the pendulum gets a dynamical stable fixed point here. So it is dynamically stable in the state, which is in the static case, completely unstable. So what it tells us? It tells us periodic driving can do fantastic things, which is unstable in the static situation, can be a stable situation under driving. Now you go back to my slides. So why is this expect, excitement now? Because this is known, this is known as Kapitza pendulum, known since the time of Kapitza. Recent ex, next slide. Okay, I'll do that. So why is this recent expect, excitement? It comes because of the fact that you can do similar things with quantum many body systems. You sit in one phase, give periodic driving, experimentally this is achieved by shining light, and you can go to the phases which are, for example, topologically non-trivial. So generation of topological phase starting from topologically trivial phase, and that is the experimental interest in Floquet graphene and Floquet topological insulators. And we have shown that taking a POF superconducting kit IF chain and then sitting in the trivial phase of that, you give for chemical potential, periodically driven chemical potential, you generate a age Majoranas, not a, rather series of age Majoranas depend, depending on the protocol of driving. Now, in this statistical mechanics meeting, I will rather focus on these things. So this has been studied in many, many ways. So you take a model, quantum many body system, drive at periodically across the quantum critical point. What are the questions which appear? First question, since you are going through a quantum critical point, as Arnav said, that there will be defect generations. So what is the scaling of defect generations? This is the first question. Second question, Arnav found out, Arnav Das, I mean, there is something called dynamical freezing. Some modes get frozen when driving is high amplitude and high frequency. Then we realized that there is also something called dynamical localization. When system does not absorb any energy, as happened to the pendulum, over a complete period in the high frequency region, the pendulum was not absorbing any energy. And this is manifested in real space localization of particles. They don't propagate. They stay frozen. Then this question I'm going to address here, what is thermalization? What happens if you drive it asymptotically large number of times across the quantum critical point? 
and it's connected to war statistics, as all of us know. Work in quantum system is not an observ observable, rather it is described by a probability distribution and corresponding cumulative generator generating function. And those things are very, very interesting in a periodic situation. And then entanglement entropy, Ornav Sen talked about this, and of course there is recent interest in many body localization. And there is always a debate what happens in integrable situation and what happens when the underlying model, which has a quantum critical point, is non-integrable. Situation could be drastically different. Now, this is the simplest model. What is the model and the question? Simplest model is transverse Ising chain, and there is a periodic driving across the quantum critical point. This model has already been in, introduced by both the Arnavs. They have This has quantum critical points at h is equal to plus minus 1, where h is the transverse field, which is non-commuting with the interaction part. And simple, simple thing and most exciting thing about this model, it is not only integrable, it is reducible to 2 cross 2 problems for each momentum mode. But 2 cross 2 problem is also get, can also get non-trivial when you drive it many, many times across the quantum critical point. Because as you know, each drive gives you extra phases and you have to take care of the phases in a coherent manner. So what is done? We drive the field in a sinusoidal man manner, 1 plus cos omega t, starting from h is equal to 2 and ending at h is equal to 0 and back to h is equal to 2 so that we cross the quantum critical point 2n times if n is the number of complete periods. Now what we do? The method. Method is reminder of Bloch theorem. You know, if you have a periodic potential where Vx plus A is Vx, you have a Bloch's general solution where psi x is e to the power i kx, ukx, where ukx plus A is ukx. So you have a periodic part and then a the plane wave part. Similar thing was done by Floquet before Bloch actually. If you have a Hamiltonian which is actually periodic in time, that is Vt plus tau is equal to Vt, where tau is the time period, you can have a solution which is of this form e to the power minus i mu, t, mu alpha t phi alpha xt. This fellow is time periodic, where these are the corresponding quasi energies, which are like this quasi momentum, which appear in the block theorem. This is essence of Floquet theory. And these are Floquet quasi energies and Floquet modes. Now, next slide. So what do we do? Method we employ. So we have to have a completely coherent approach so that after every periodic driving, we should not be losing any phase information. Okay? That is done through Floquet approach. Evaluate the quasi energies and Floquet mode. I give you a protocol. Then you construct the Floquet operator, which is an unitary operator. Diagonalize that. Diagonalization gives you the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are my Floquet modes and Floquet eigenenergies. Now, you take the initial state. I'm working at t is equal to 0. Then initial state is the ground state of the initial Hamiltonian with h is equal to 2, where I start from. Now, at any time, I, my resulting state at time t will be like this. It's a two-level problem. That's why I have two quasi energies, which are mu k and minus mu k. Yes, sign is okay. And plus minus corresponds to two levels. So this is my wave function at any instant of time projected in the Floquet basis. Now we call, do it after n full periods. And after full n full periods, that means 2n crossing of the quantum critical point, this is the wave function I reach. And I ask the question, what is the residual energy? What is the extra energy? Because I cannot be adiabatic. I'm crossing the quantum critical point where the inherent time scale of the problem diverges. So however slow I drive it, it has to be non-adiabatic. I must generate some heat and that extra energy I'm calling the residual energy. Okay. Now first question was asked, does it heat up to infinity? So is the entropy maximum? Two levels I'm talking about, are they equally probable if I do it asymptotically many number of times? Answer is no. If you lose the coherence, there was a paper which where we did this mistake, Diptiman, Shen and me, we threw away some of the coherence part and we ended up at an infinite temperature. Later we realized that's the, not the right physics. You have to re retain all coherent coherence phase informations and this is what you get. 
you this is the residual energy you can forget all these things this is where Floquet takes over I showed you the pendulum but this thing this dynamical stable point will come only when this driving frequency is much much higher in comparison to the characteristic frequency of the pendulum so this is the region where it reaches a periodic steady state is no longer absorbs energy, you are pumping energy to the system, it reaches a periodic steady state and it goes into this periodic steady state and you can calculate this residual energy. You see the, this has two pieces, one is diagonal inflow cabasis, other is of diagonal inflow cabasis. The idea is that if you do it many, many number of times, you see there are rapidly oscillating terms which actually vanishes. You are, because you are integrating over all the K modes, you are left with this diagonal ensemble. Question, then apparently it seems everything becomes diagonal. You can work with a density matrix. This is the density matrix which is constructed out of the final state I reach. You remember what I doing, I'm doing? I'm periodically taking it across quantum critical point. After n full periods, I have reached this density matrix. This is the full density matrix in the flow cabasis. What essentially is being done in this integral, we are actually getting rid of these of diagonal terms, that is complete decoherence in Floquet space. Not in the original basis we are, I started with, it is in the Floquet state, I can think of a complete decoherence of diagonal term goes away, it doesn't heat up to infinity, and I have of diagonal terms vanishing means I can talk about a diagonal ensemble. One can show it is equivalent to GGE, okay? But that's not the end of the story. Then, having learned that all this result produced in this paper by Rusomanno can be interpreted when I, we started working on this, Radha and I, we realized that actually they are talking about a diagonal ensemble. Is this the correct description for all the quantities? So we defined some quantity which is called the fidelity. We called it dynamical fidelity, which is overlap between initial state you started with and the state you reach after n complete periods. You cross the quantum critical point two n times, and this is the dynamical fidelity you arrive at, and look at this quantity, Fnt is Lgn. We ask the question whether Gn, omega naught, n going to infinity goes to a steady state value, can it reach the plateau region which I mentioned? And second question, if so, it, if it is described by the cohort density matrix. So for all quantities, can I say I will work with a diagonal ensemble in flow cabasis? So this is the answer we realized. We found an exact analytic form for omega naught greater than four for this quantity which we call dynamical fidelity. And omega naught four is important because it is the maximum characteristic scale of the quantum critical system I'm talking about. So if you want to reach that plateau region, you have to exceed this region, this frequency omega naught greater than four. And then we realized you cannot work with a decohort density matrix and G infinity, that is the value G reaches after infinite number of periods is le less than the decohort value, which you would have obtained using the row, row decohort, completely decohort density matrix in the flow case. So this is our final result. This is the plateau, plateau region you see. It saturates to a periodic steady state value, but never with the decohered density matrix. So it is not a diagonal ensemble any longer. So this is the conclusion. This is the quantity we looked at. We called it a dynamical fidelity. It indeed reaches a steady state value asymptotically with n, and it does not hit up to infinity that we can attribute to the integrability of the underlying quantum model, but one cannot use row decohort. So one can find an exact solution, and that exact solution tells you that the value you get is not derived in terms of completely decohort density matrix in the flow case space, okay? So saturation to a finite non-zero value, a permanent loss of coherence when you calculate some extensive quantities, and integrate over all the momentum modes. Apparently, you have a mixed state, though it is not possible. It's a unitary dynamics, so you have all the phase informations, but while evaluating these extensive quantities of diagonal terms goes off, but it is not completely diagonal ensemble. So that is my concluding comment. It's not fully decohered for any omega naught, 
not a diagonal ensemble, not a GG, it depends on what you measure. If you measure residual energy, fine, you can tell it is a GG. If you make measure anything with log, it is not a diagonal ensemble. Thank you very much. So, and uh, that was, of course, generalized a few years later by Landau. Yes. And what they showed is that, that in the, what he showed is that in the very large omega limit, mm. in a classical driven system, right. there's an effective static potential that arises. This is, this is, so, I know. My question, so, so, this has been exploited in the, so in the context of phase transition mm. by Sridhar Datta. There's a nice paper which does that. Of course, classical mm -hmm. I know. phase transition. Anyway, my, my question was, is there an effective static part to your Hamiltonian in the very large omega naught limit? No, that we have not analyzed. All we have, we can say that in some cases, you can describe the state by a decohort density matrix. Whether you can write an effective potential and you can analyze the stability, you let, know later it was analyzed that how stable this fellow was uh, disturbing the pendulum from the topmost position. He cannot do with an, a very large amplitude. And stability is not there. This part is not analyzed in quantum problems because writing a potential for this type of problem itself would be a problem. Yeah, so uh, you have shown that uh, on the average, the th thing doesn't absorb energy, but it doesn't actually get into a periodic state ever, right? As your picture showed. No, uh, uh, it's not a periodic state in that sense. Yeah. All I'm saying, you are periodically uh, driving it, it reaches a steady state. That's what I'm calling, it's a periodic steady state. Uh -huh, but I'm saying that the word periodic steady state is a misleading, uh, misleading nomenclature. Uh, that's what uh, the first paper people wrote, I quoted from that. Okay, but m meaning is that it's periodically driven, it doesn't absorb energy. In that sense, language of, if Arul corrects me if I am wrong, in the language of quantum chaos, I can call it, it's, it's also dynamically localized, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, same thing happens. It doesn't absorb energy and also kicked rotors. So I... Right. See, see, your density matrix is never diagonal density matrix because it is unitary dynamics. How can you have a mixed state? Okay, now my question is, my question is, my point is, you are calculating residual energy. You are integrating over all K modes, right? That allows you to set rapidly oscillating terms to zero. So I am saying that effectively you can work with a Diagonal density matrix. But what we studied with uh, Sraddha and Angelo, this quantity has carrying a log. Whenever you have a log dependent term, your Riemann Lebesgue theorem has to be looked back. And you cannot set rapidly oscillating terms to zero. That's the basic point. You cannot say log of a rapidly oscillating term, I average over everything, it is zero. That's the point. So you cannot work with. I don't think there is any more time for questions. So. I will invite next speaker. Same with me, but probably not with you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>